When creating your character grooms, it is uh, very important and very useful to be able to control the distribution of the roots of your hair strands. This is especially true for creating feather grooms, because feathers typically are larger and are placed more sparsely on your character, so any kind of errors that are there in the placement of the hairs become amplified. To make it more challenging, feathers usually appear in layers and almost like a grid on top of a character, so it is especially more difficult to control this. In this quick tutorial, I'm just going to show how to do this in Ornatrix, how to control the uh, feather uh, scenario. But you can use the same technique to specify the distribution of your hair roots on any kind of character. So uh, to start, I'm going to select my bird here, which you can download freely from our website. And I'm going to place uh, some Ornatrix hair in it. So I'm just going to uh, select the quick hair. And this is all pretty straightforward at this point. I'm going to just reduce the length. And uh, in this case, it uh, doesn't really matter for us um, the position or the shape of the hairs because uh, we're just concerned about the distribution in this tutorial. So to make it a little bit more visible, I'm going to set this to full. And you can see that right now the roots are placed in a random order and they are uniformly spaced uh, away from each other. So this is good, but uh, in case of feathers, we usually want to use them in a grid-like uh, scenario. So I'm going to change my distribution to uniform and I'm going to increase my view viewport fraction to 100% so we see all of the hairs at the same time. This is useful for feathers because when you use uniform distribution, it's going to create a grid, but when you decrease the viewport uh, count, it's just going to randomly remove hairs, which make it appear that don't have an even distribution and instead it looks like they're splotty on top of your character. So I'm going to just reduce the render count a bit. And at this point, it appears to be pretty visually pleasing. So we clearly have a grid of our roots distributed on the top of our character. But the question now is, what if we want to control where and how these roots are distributed. For example, what if you want them to be more dense in this area, more sparse in this area, if we want to have more hairs on the wings, and so on. So to do this, we will uh, play with the UV space. So the, the uniform distribution uses the underlying UV coordinates to control the placement of the hair roots. So to be able to work with this, we need to be able to work with the UV channel. Right now, it's using the UV channel 1, which is the only UV channel we have on, on our mesh, but the same channel is also used for texturing. And if we just play around with this channel, we're going to screw up the texturing, so it is better to create a separate channel. I'm going to select my bird mesh, and I'm going to go into the UV menu and go to the UV set editor. I'm going to select the UV channel 1, and I'm just going to copy it into a sep separate set. I'm going to double click this to rename it and I'm going to rename it to hair distribution. And then I'm just going to update and close. And incidentally our hair disappeared because uh, I forgot to exit this render count uh, here. So I'm going to set it to 100 or maybe even uh, 1000. Uh, so we see our hairs again, maybe even more, so 5000. Uh, now we can see our hairs and in this UV set parameter I selected hair distribution and now if I edit this hair distribution channel it will affect my hairs but it will not affect the texturing which is exactly what we want. I opened my uh, UV editor here which you can do through the uh, UV menu in Maya and when I select my mesh, my bird mesh in the UV editor I can see the UV coordinates which can now be manipulated. So I'm just gonna zoom in on this and I'm also going to open again my UV set editor and I'm going to make sure that I have hair distribution selected here. Now I'm going to right click and enter component selection for my mesh and I'm just going to select the UV shells at the one at a time. Uh, this is just to demonstrate that if we are changing our UV coordinates in the UV editor, they're also going to change affect our root distribution. So I'm just going to se select this and if you can see that when I'm moving this UV shell, we are interactively moving the hair roots on top of our character. So uh, to extend on this, we can also select individual parts of this UV shell. So I'm going to right click and just select a single vertex. And I'm also going to go into my UV tools. And inside this uh, tools window, we have a soft selection drop down. I can check the soft selector option here and I can play with the volume parameter to increase or decrease the volume or the area that I want to affect. So right now it's 19, I'm going to set it to something like 10. And when I go to my UV editor 
and let me just zoom in here so we can see how this affects our root positions. When I go to my UV editor and I start to scale, you can see that I'm increasing or decreasing density in this specific part of the mesh. Additionally, I can also move this around. So I can increase parts of the density in one place while decreasing them in the other place. Or I can even rotate this to create kind of swirling of the roots on top of my character. So this is possible to do on any part of the mesh. So you can use this technique to really uh, fiddle around and play with your UVs and affect the hair placement on your character in a very direct way. Use Maya's rich UV toolset to help you along the way. And I will see you in the next tutorial where we will be learning how to use this technique to place our feathers. Thank you.